Hey guys, my name is Adam, and I have a story to tell you. On the outside, I'm sure I look like a normal person, someone who doesn't have much to say or just goes through much in this life. What no one knows is that I lived a night that would change anyone's life, and the consequences of what I lived are still haunting me. It all started one night in December. I was driving down a lonely road in the middle of the night. I wasn't really going anywhere, I just like to drive at this time. I know many people will disagree and tell me that it's reckless and dangerous, but those comments never bothered me. The drive was going well. It didn't seem to be a very special night and nothing unusual was happening. But about halfway through, one of the worst possible things that could happen to me. The car started to fail and soon it came to a complete stop. I had no cell phone signal and was far from anywhere inhabited. I stood outside the car, waiting for someone to come by, but I knew this was very unlikely, so, so I left the car on the road and decided to walk in search of help. I walked for a while and found a house at the end of the road. I approached it in the hope that someone might be able to help me. I knocked on the door, thinking about how I could convince them that I wasn't a psychopath or someone dangerous. But to my surprise, I was greeted by a couple who didn't doubt me for a second. They looked friendly invited me in, offered me food and a place to stay for the night. I admit I started to feel a little uncomfortable, but maybe it was because they were too nice. At that moment, I thought that we were so used to people being cruel or self-serving that when we really see nice people, we get uncomfortable or think something's wrong. As we were eating dinner, I noticed that the food tasted strange, but I didn't say anything for fear of offending my hosts. They were both looking at me with huge grins from ear to ear. They seemed to be obsessed with me eating. After a few more bites, I decided to retire to rest in the room they offered me. In the middle of the night, I heard strange noises outside my room. I carefully got up and tried to get out to see what was going on, but I couldn't. The door to the room was locked. I tried not to panic, not to scream, and tried not to break the door down. But while I was thinking about what to do, I began to hear voices from the other side of the... It seems our little guest didn't enjoy his dinner. I know. I'm sure it lacked enough spices. He made me feel very bad. He's ungrateful. But keep in mind he's not in his own house. It makes sense that he's a little... uncomfortable. I know, darling. Thank you. At that moment, I relaxed a little. Maybe I was overreacting. I considered going back to sleep and the next day to apologize for the way I left the table, but suddenly I heard something else. Besides, what does it matter if he enjoyed the dinner or not? We're basically just feeding a piglet. <laughs> it's true, honey. You have to keep him well fed. Tomorrow I'll make him a big breakfast. That way, when we open him up, he'll taste better. Hmm, I can't wait to taste it. It sure is delicious. I just don't understand how human flesh is so good. Hearing those last words, my blood froze and I was paralyzed with terror. In that instant, I understood the true nature of this family. They were cannibals. I was in the house of a family of monsters that fed on human beings. My heart was pounding. I, I didn't know what to do. I was trapped in the middle of the night, far from any help. I tried to stay calm, but fear paralyzed me. I activated the location on my cell phone and sent it to my brother, telling him I needed help. I quickly told him that I was kidnapped and that if he didn't act quickly, I would be killed. Before I could do anything else, I heard footsteps approaching. I tried to hide, but before I could, the door was opening. It was one of them with a cold and sinister look. He grabbed me tightly and dragged me into another room. <laughs> you know, I knew you were listening to everything I was saying. Why do you think I said it out loud? Do you think because we live on the road we don't have cameras? Please, don't eat me. Let me out. Oh, come on. You think after all you heard I'd let you go? I tried to resist, but he was stronger. 
He drug me down the hall and threw me into a room with extreme ease. And as the wife arrived and joined her husband, I saw something that left me in shock. There were dismembered bodies. Human remains. Everywhere. I tried to escape, struggling with all my might, but they were determined to make me their next victim. Grabbing me roughly, the man sat me on a chair and grabbed both my arms so I couldn't run away. Meanwhile, the woman slowly approached me. She had a huge smile on her face, and in her hands, she had a lighted needle puncher, which was slowly moving toward my head. You know, I was terrified, like I'd never been in my life. But a part of me had some hope. One thing I had noticed since I saw the woman with the hole punch was a strange smell coming from them. It was the smell of wine. At that moment I felt the man grabbing me somewhat unsteadily and the woman walking towards me in a very slow and meticulous way, but at the same time erratic. These people knew what they were doing. They had killed before and had every intention of doing it again, but this time they made a mistake. They were completely drunk. I decided to try and stay calm and loosen my body a little, looking for an opportunity to attack. When the woman was almost at my side, I managed to kick her in the knee. This caused the man to be distracted for a moment, which I took advantage of to get away from him and hit him. As soon as I regained control of the situation, I ran away, without looking back, with my heart beating so hard that I felt it would leave my body. I ran and ran, not knowing where I was going. I was lost in the darkness of the night. I heard their voices behind me, chasing me. No matter how much alcohol they had, they were still very dangerous indeed, and if they caught me, they would not forgive me for running away. This was all a nightmare, a nightmare that refused to end. Finally, I saw lights in the distance. I ran towards the direction they were coming from, and then I identified the lights better. I realized that I was on the road, and that those lights were the police. I came screaming for help, and when they saw me, one of them asked me if my name was Adam. Apparently, these cops were surrounding the area, looking for me. I told the police everything, and they called for reinforcements and went to the cannibal's house. But they didn't find them in the house. They were probably hiding in the woods from the moment they saw the police sirens. On the other hand, everything I told you proved to be true, since they found the corpses of the previous victims and managed to identify the brutal killers. To be honest, I don't know how the case ended. After giving my testimony, I, to be honest, I don't know how the case ended. After giving my testimony, I decided to stay away from the trial altogether. I know for sure they both received life sentences, but I really didn't want to know anything else about what happened. I didn't want to remember at all what I experienced that night. That was the last night ride I ever took. It may have been a few years ago, but I still dream of that horrible room. When I wake up, I see the eyes of both psychopaths meeting mine. It's as if they never left, as if they live inside me, refusing to let me go on with my life and mocking me because I ate human flesh that night. Hello everyone. We are thrilled that you have been enjoying our videos. Your support means the world to us. If you've liked what you've seen, please consider liking and subscribing to our channel. We would love to hear which one of our videos is your favorite. We're on a mission to reach 100,000 members in the SSG family, and with your help, we can achieve that goal. Thank you for being a part of our journey. For the last year, I've been a regular viewer of this channel, and let me tell you how happy I get when a new video pops up in my notification. I know a lot of you can relate to this. Being a truck driver, most of the time I'm on the road. These videos and music keep me entertained throughout my drives. But today, I'm going to share a true night driving horror story with you, and I hope you enjoy it. My name is Stefan and for the past eight years I've been a truck driver. I always enjoyed driving and being on the road, so when I was approached by my uncle to work as a driver in his transportation company, I jumped at the opportunity. 
I'm also a part of the truck driving community, and we all share our good as well as bad or terrifying experiences with each other. I too had seen my fair share of sketchy and illegal things on the road, but what happened to me that one time made me question everything. The company that I work for transports electronic goods, furniture, and other non-perishable items most of the time. There was one such delivery I had to do from South Carolina to North Dakota. It was December, so the atmosphere was already chilly, and driving through snow-covered roads is not my favorite part. However, I was requested to make this delivery by my uncle, as the other driver had taken sick leave. I reluctantly accepted to drive the goods, on one condition, that I would drive slowly and take my time delivering them. My uncle happily agreed as the company was soon to be closing for Christmas. In my trucker's community, I have a lot of drivers that had mentioned weird things happening on the way to North Dakota. Although I listened to all of them, I never really believed in the supernatural or the paranormal. I always thought those things were a result of your mind playing tricks on you. Not to mention the road life can be extremely lonely at times. On my third day of the drive, there was a snowstorm warning. I was just on the outskirts of North Dakota and had to call it a day. I always avoid driving in rough weather. Better to be late than dead. But this snowstorm was a hell of a lot worse than the ones I'd dealt with before. I'd planned to find truck parking and spend my time there, but the weather didn't permit me to go any further than a couple of miles. Finally defeated and tired of making my way through the snow-covered roads, I parked in a small clearing by the freeway. There was no chance I was getting out of the truck. Also, the sun was about to set, so I knew it would be pitch black soon. I did my regular drill, checked the back doors of the trailer and make sure everything was locked up, made sure all the tires weren't covered in snow, and locked the driver's and passenger side door. Boarded up the front glass with a blackout curtain that I carry with me, and I shut the windows. I knew I had to keep the heating on in my truck if I wanted to sleep comfortably. Plus, I had to make dinner. By the time it was dark outside, I had eaten my dinner, a simple sandwich, relieved myself, and was ready to get some shut-eye. I lay in the makeshift bed behind the driver's and passenger seat, pulled a blanket over myself, and got comfortable. I knew it would take a few minutes to fall asleep, so I decided to watch some of SSG Animation's scary videos on YouTube. I'm not sure when I fell asleep, but I jolted awake after hearing a sudden bang. It was as if someone had hit something hard and big against the rear of my truck. My phone was beside my bed and it was dark, inside and out. My first instinct was that maybe I'd had a dream, so I decided to go back to sleep only to be woken up by another bang a couple minutes later. This time, however, I knew I wasn't dreaming. Someone, or something, was banging on my truck, and they were hitting hard against the steel. I had a couple of incidents of homeless people or straight-up thieves trying to steal stuff from my parked truck. But who would get here in the middle of the snowstorm with two or three feet of snow everywhere? Bang! Once again... Who the hell was it? I knew it was intentional as no wild animal ever targets a big object repeatedly and never in a snowstorm. But who would be daring enough to get out here in such a remote place and at that ungodly hour just to torment a truck driver? If it weren't snowing so much, I'd step out and confront the person or people. I always carried a small gun with me, just in case. So I wasn't afraid. But this time, something in my gut told me to stay inside and not react. However, I was curious, so I decided to film whatever was going on through my window. With my phone camera, I moved over from my bed to get closer to the window. As soon as I pointed my camera towards the exterior of the truck, I saw weird yellow eyes staring straight at me from the corner of my window. I was so scared that I stumbled back into my bed. I didn't make a single sound, as the only thing keeping me safe from the creature outside was the truck door and some breakable glass. I knew as soon as I saw the eye that this was no wolf or bear, nor was this any human or 
any animal for that matter. It was something else. Something we didn't know about. I stayed tucked in my bed and kept recording as much as I could. Soon I spotted an ear of the creature, all while the bang continued. This meant there was more than one of these creatures. I knew I didn't stand a chance in front of one of these guys, not even with my gun, so the wise thing was to lay low and hope they'd leave me alone. Also, the battery of my phone was about to die, so I stopped recording and curled myself back in bed. Now the creatures were moving to the front of the truck, and I was terrified. I knew the only one who could save my life from the terrifying creatures outside was God. So I started praying while I hid beneath my blanket. The creatures banged on the doors and the hood of the truck. They were trying to open the doors to get in, but I double-locked them, a locking technique I'd learned very early on in my trucking career. Now, without my phone, I wasn't able to see anything outside. All I could do was hear the noises made by these creatures. This went on for at least an hour, after which the creatures got bored of my truck and left. That night, I didn't sleep one bit. I was wide awake in case the creatures returned, but they never did. The next morning after sunrise, I scouted the surroundings from the inside of my truck, and when I thought the coast was clear, I jumped out of the truck. I jumped straight into four feet of snow. There were no footprints on the ground for me to figure out if it was a human or an animal. However, as I moved towards the back of the truck, there were multiple dents in the steel, which resembled a powerful punch. Not scratched from an animal's paw or horns, but a human punch. Who would be strong enough to put such deep dents into a steel truck? I had no idea, but I decided to get the hell out of that place as soon as I could. Finally, I reached my destination by midday, and fortunately, the snow on the road had melted and the weather was pleasant. The people unloading the stuff from my truck had asked if I'd gotten into an accident, looking at all the dents on it. I told them what had happened, and they told me that no one dares to travel on that part of the freeway after sunset, and the people living in that region believe that a half-human, half-animal hybrid roams that area after sundown and attacks anything and any one who comes across it. To date, no one has been able to catch or even get a photo of this animal as it's as smart as a human and as strong as an animal. Then, I showed the footage on my phone, and perhaps that was the only time someone had captured those creatures on camera. I don't know if I should consider myself lucky or extremely lucky. What do you think those things were? Werewolves? Humanoids or aliens? I, for one, have no clue what they were, and nor do I ever want to know. <laughs>